Think back to a time when you were invited over to someone's house for dinner. How did you feel upon receiving that invitation? What did you see as you sat down at a table filled with delicious food prepared just for you? It is likely that your responses to those questions are all overwhelmingly positive. Being a dinner guest in someone's home, while it might seem quite common these days, is actually a sacred and a holy event. It's not likely that you stumbled into the house by accident. You were chosen and favored by the host. You were deemed worthy of being a guest in their home. This is a gracious step that most hosts take very seriously. They will have chosen their guests with great care and intention. Well, it just so happens that God is in the process of hosting the greatest dinner party that the world has ever seen. And the best part is, he is inviting you. Hello, friends. I'm Todd Berge, Senior Pastor of the Bridge Church of Algonquin. Today, I'm excited to share with you the vision that we have for a new church building, a permanent home for our congregation, a refuge for our local community, and a beacon of hope for those in need. Through many years of dreaming, planning, and most importantly, God's faithfulness and provision, we are in the early stages of designing and implementing a construction plan for our new building. Currently, we own undeveloped property located on Route 25 and Long Meadow Parkway, a beautiful plot of land which just so happens to exist at the center of our target geographical footprint for maximum community impact. While this is indeed a wonderfully exciting project to begin working on as a church family, there will be many challenging years of prayer, discernment, and faithfulness that lie ahead of us before we walk through the doors of our new church home for the very first time. But before we get too far into the details, I'd like to take a moment to give credit where credit is due. The only reason that we have this opportunity is because of the great love of our gracious God. Only he could have written a story so powerful as to allow us to be in this moment where we all are right now. So with that, we give glory and praise to him who is providing a way for us to further his kingdom here on earth. Now, long before the Bridge Church hosted its first Sunday service, God had been hard at work planning a banquet of heavenly proportions, a grand feast for you and for me, for those both near and far to him, for those we know and for those that we have yet to meet. This is a promise made to us by Jesus himself. In Matthew 8, 11, Jesus says, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The absolute purpose for this building is not to simply be a house of worship, but to be a place where people of any background will find love, support, and care in ways that only Christ Jesus can provide. This new building is the table in which the Lord is preparing his banquet. Friends, as we journey through this construction project together, we are being extended an invitation to be chosen guests at God's great feast. He is preparing a place for all and together we will enjoy all of the goodness that he has in store for us. In our time together here, we're going to hear from many voices who have been a part of the story at the bridge in the past and the present, and even some who are part of the next chapter. As you watch and listen, all I ask is that you engage with these stories with an open heart because God has a place for you in his story. And it is being written right now as we speak. Sometimes it's uncomfortable when God invites us to something new. I know that Jeannie and I were uncomfortable when God called us out of a place, a church, family, where he was working, where he sensed hospitality and the comfort, where we raised our kids. But God didn't just invite us out. He invited others from Village Church. He invited others from other churches to join us in this work, this new work that he was doing in Algonquin. And now Dr. Norbeck is going to tell the story that God wrote for us in the early days at the Bridge Church of Algonquin. My name is Dave Norbeck, and I'm currently the chairman of the Elder Board at the Bridge Church. I started attending the Bridge Church in February of 2015. 
God has moved the Bridge Church amazingly over time to different places, and it's been kind of a roller coaster ride as far as emotions going through that. Initially, God opened a door for us at the Eastgate Elementary School, and we started meeting in the Algonquin Middle School because we were able to lease space in that area, and that was great because we had a big space. The only difficulty was we had to set up church every day, which means a whole team of people had to come in for about a good hour before services to set everything up, and then after services we had to tear everything down, and we had a great relationship with the uh, both the elementary school as well as the middle school, and so it worked out to be a great place for probably three or four years. But we felt long-term that we needed a place to have a building because we knew that all this setup and tear down wasn't something long term that's going to be viable. And so we started praying and asking God, God, would you give us some land? I remember we even went behind, there was some property about 25 acres behind the jewel. So our elder team went there one day and we just prayed and said, God, would you give us this land? And he very clearly said no. <laughs> but the amazing thing was very soon after that, um, through one of our elders' relationships with someone, um, we were able to buy 45 acres in um, right on the edge of Barrington Hills, Algonquin, and Carpentersville. And that turned out to be a phenomenal opportunity for for us. And we thought we would stay in the Algonquin Middle School until we were able to build on that property. And one day after service, I remember a man came up to me and he said, hey, are you guys at all interested in leasing a building over in Barrington Hills that the chapel owns that they don't have any current use for? And I said, no. I said, well, let me go ask Pastor Todd and see if he has any thoughts. So I go over to Pastor Todd and I say, hey, Pastor Todd, this guy wants to know if we want to lease this building in Barrington. He looked at me and said, no, <laughs> we're happy where we are. And amazingly enough, that very week, the school district came back to us and realized that they had been undercharging us for the facilities and they needed to give us a new bill that was gonna increase our cost probably five times from what we were paying. So we just couldn't afford to stay in the middle school anymore. And so God opened this door of this new building where they were looking for somebody to lease this full church already built in Barrington Hills. And it was gonna mean that we were gonna have to go a little bit farther from our target area. So we met as a leadership team. And initially we were like 50-50. 50% of us said, yeah, we should go. And 50% said, no, I wanna stay here where God has called us. But over that next two weeks, we prayed the Holy Spirit led all of us until we became unanimous that God was calling us to this new facility in Barrington Hills that the chapel owns and we lease it from them. And it's been a great place because it's a, a beautiful building. It has everything that a church would need. And so it's been a great place for us to flourish and start to grow. And we're excited to see where God will take us next. We have an open hand. We realize that God has moved us around and he probably will continue to move us around. And we feel like he's calling us to this property on, on Route 25 in Barrington Hills in Carpentersville and Algonquin. So we're seeing what he will do next. And obviously he has to provide the means to get there because buildings are expensive. But I'm excited with what God is doing to the Bridge Church. And we feel God is definitely using us to reach out to this community that we're going into. I'm especially excited about new doors that he's opened uh, with some of the schools in Carpentersville. We feel confident that if God wants us there, he will provide our needs. And we have put our faith and trust in that. Once God moved Jeannie and I to a place where we knew we were called to this work, I was so surprised by the people that he called to join us, the people he invited to join us. And no feast can be delivered without servants who help set the table. We had such great help that God invited to join us to build in the very early days of our church. Kelly Kaufman and Max and Tanya Kittle were such servants. They looked for the way to help set the table, and that's what they did. They come now and tell the story of those early moments in the church. My name's Tanya Kittle, and this is my husband, Max, and we've been going to the Bridge Church for eight years. I remember being at a church meeting at Village Church, and they started introducing the idea of planting a church. We knew several people that were on the launch team. There were probably about 50 of us. These people helped us connect to one another and help us to grab unity and really become a family with each other. And as we uh, would have to set up for church, as we planned, as we did events, uh, it, they became really close to us. It just formed a little beautiful community among us where we knew that we could expect that each other was going to be there and have our backs. Mm -hmm. It just felt good when you came uh, together to do that and to see the results of how you turn a gymnasium into a sanctuary. 
there was a big leap of faith when we planted the church because who would come? Right. Would there just be the launch team or who would come from the neighborhood? And to see people from the neighborhood, people who live down the block start coming, it was just a wonderful thing to see. One of the things that Todd challenged all of us with was thinking beyond where we were at right now. Who did God want to reach now in Barrington Hills? There's got to be a reason why he's moving us. When I meet people and they tell me where they're from, I remember that and I think, we moved here for, for, for you. Mm -hmm. We moved here for your family, for mm -hmm. your family. One of the things that we've all, when we were even in the early stages of planning about for a church was, was how could we be a resource to the community. With the space we have in Carpentersville, I think that was one of our things. We were talking about a community center. Could we be a community center that we really give it to the community and we just kind of use the space on Sunday mornings and for our ministries? We have that opportunity to be uh, available to Carpentersville, Algonquin, uh, to District 300 even. Uh, could the high school use our auditorium for their concerts or their musicals or things like that. So we really want to think of what God can do with our partnerships that He's already allowed us to have with the schools. I just continuously see God opening doors and you know telling us this this is for a season and now I'm moving you to the next season. Mm -hmm. It's just been a joy and a dream to uh, serve God, to get to know people and do church together, to do life together and grow in Christ together. I'm Kelly Kaufman and my husband and I relocated out of Illinois about half a year ago. So we're getting settled here, but I served with the Bridge Church since the very beginning, since its launch, and I served as the children's ministry director. One of the greatest challenges for me was building a children's ministry out of nothing. One of the things we were able to do early on was to do a sports camp. It was a really, really wonderful way to connect with the families in the community. We were able to let them see who we are by serving their kids and having fun with their kids. We sh showed that we're fun, loving, we're kind, and that was a really wonderful way that we advocated for families. I think when we look back on the story of the bridge, there will be many sort of checkpoints along the way where we can affirm that God was in the details. He was affirming the things we were doing and sometimes he would redirect us or help us to put things on pause. Our team was very good about stopping to pray. A prayer was really an essential. So as we wait with anticipation to see what God's going to do, um, I would encourage specifically parents and grandparents to take a look at their kids. It's the place where their kids are going to grow up um, hearing the stories of God, choosing Jesus. That is an eternal impact. That is a kingdom investment, and that is kingdom growth. Some people think of church as an island or a building with high walls that keeps the world out. That somehow our job is to keep safe and comfortable in our own little feasts. But we understand and understood that God was calling us to not only go to Algonquin, but to reach the community around us. We just didn't know how God was going to do it. Well, God worked miraculously and opened doors at Eastview Elementary and Algonquin Middle School and in the community around it. And we have the privilege now of hearing from some of the faculty and the principal of Eastview to tell us the story. We will also be hearing from faculty members at a school in Carpentersville where God is building new relationships and opening new doors. Hey, Todd. Hey, how you doing, Jim? Good, how are you? <laughs> so and I think part of our job today is to tell the story of how the bridge and Eastview Elementary School got together. We actually, it was strange to me uh, we weren't even a church yet. It was a year and a half before we came to church, and, and God miraculously opened a door that I never imagined. There was a time when it seemed like we needed another piece to add to the things that we were doing. I have a PE teacher, Julie Bielan, and she's got this project that she wants to undertake, and it involves being after school. She's thinking about something else that we could add to draw people in to make it sort of worth their while and make it more of like this family event. We had been looking for a while for our quote unquote community partner. 
Once we got rolling that night, I think you and I got along pretty well. I didn't have to really step into your part. Basically, that night gave me confidence that the church could be a partner with us for the future, for future things. So the, the truth is that uh, this story that has been written in the last eight years is, uh, is, is my, one of my favorite. But the doors that he opened with the school and the story of our friendship, and really at the core of it is a friendship that mm -hmm. there's just, we trust each other. I completely right. trust you and you completely trust me and we can go, you know, you can call me and say there's a family that's, or whatever, and we deal with it. You say, how can I help? And I say, yes, let's do this or let's go here. What do you think about this? Yeah. So we're constantly working with each other to create you know, opportunities for other people to help some people out, and it's, it's been good. The first time you asked me to say a blessing, uh, you said it that way, Todd, do you want, would you say a blessing? Thing? And I say back to you, what do you mean? Do you mean pray? And you said, yeah, yeah, you know. Um, you pray? Go ahead, I want Wait. you to pray. And and I, I did it, and I remember leaving and going, I can't believe that just happened. I can't believe I was allowed to pray. And I really thought that was gonna be one and done, that I would not pray in this school again, unless it was just quietly and not publicly. Why would you ask me to pray? What were you thinking? <laughs> Teachers are really good people, and they're just kind, good people. And I think a common theme among common, good people is just the idea that, you know what, we're going to say a prayer before we eat. And I think that's a very common thread that passes through everybody, and it doesn't matter the setting that we're doing it in. It's you are here, why not, let's do it. Part of the miracle is our relationship and how trust built up. And we knew that I was gonna do everything I could to protect you and not put you in an awkward position. But you kind of pushed the envelope on that. You were always pushing the envelope that, Todd, be yourself and, and uh, go ahead and promote what's going on in church. And I'm, I'm like, no, no, no. And that tension is part of the beauty of of the, the trust that built up in our friendship, that you're really fighting for our church, and I'm really fighting for your school, and together, this partnership built that was miraculous. We were, we were destined to meet. It yeah. Was, it was yeah. gonna happen. I gotta tell you, I'm thankful you're my friend. I think I always knew and always believed that God was present at Eastview, and I could feel it. Um, with the staff, with the teachers, with the kids. But what you guys have done is you made it an outward sign. I had a third grade teacher at our Catholic grade school who said a sacrament is an outward sign instituted by Christ to give grace. And that's always been on my mind. And, and, and that's who you guys are. You guys are that outward sign. You're that visible sign. When I think about Peter and how he was told by Jesus You'll show you love me by loving others, and that's what the bridge has done. Um, they've shown it through feeding us, um, helping our students, working with as mentors, the, the camps that have gone on, just feeding the teachers, um, the ice cream socials, the, the food, the pasta, everything you've brought in um, as a church has meant so much and helped our community. I think about the prayer because we often talk about mm -hmm. um, the success of our students through their testing, yet they are coming in lower than they had been in years past. And so I think the prayer that's been very consistent for our school, for the teachers, for the students, for the families has been a correlation to our success overall. Sometimes it's just your presence. We can sit and list you know, the things that you guys do, but most of the time it's just your presence here. You guys allowed yourselves to be instruments. And there's no way that this existed without, without you guys praying to God and saying, use us. Oh, he used you here. My name is Alma Oxterer. My title is Family Liaison and Translator for the School. My main responsibilities is to not only connect for translation, but also to find resources and services for the families in need. 
Bridges Church was brought to us by a, a member of the district office, and we uh, have been able to get some school supplies for the family, family uh, meals for Thanksgiving that otherwise the, baby, the families were not able to uh, afford. When it comes to this, especially the school supplies, it was so great to have it because retail has sales at the beginning of the school year, but not during the middle of the school year. So it is hard to ask the parents to buy a notebook that at the beginning of the school year might be 50 cents, but once the beginning of the school year, it might be $2. It was great help for uh, Bridges to help us on that and schools would love to be able to do events during the day but we do not have the space we do not have the room uh, given that bridges approached us about you know what can we do for you this is something that i i feel that bridges can do for the community build a conference room or a meeting room or an activity room where we the schools can uh, probably approach them to be able to use it and just make these connections with families. My name is Rachel Schilling. Uh, I am the assistant principal at Lakewood Elementary School. I think the, the biggest potential that, that we see in having uh, the location of this church be so close to our school building um, is the opportunity again to just continue that partnership and be able to have that open communication and provide that space where um, we can direct families when they ask about um, needs and resources and things that they um, are, are seeking and looking for. Um, you know, within the district, we're, we're able to provide and we have our different pathways that we use to provide um, resources resources for families, but this is then another um, resource that's within their own community that I think will help um, families feel very connected and supported by because it's something that they're going to see, you know, driving by or walking by and um, be able to have a connection with because of its closeness to where they live. I feel that Lakewood is setting a good example of connections between school and community and resources. Once they see how good Lakewood is working with our community resources, and Bridges is a good example of how we can work together. I feel other schools will start to connect together and make this one big circle. I want to invite you to prayerfully consider if God is calling you to help build the church at the bridge. Now, I know that God will provide. I know that God has already got a plan for how he's going to provide the funds. I'm actually convinced that God could provide the funds and build the church without us. But one of the greatest privileges that Ginny and I have had in our lives is to be called out of that place of comfort to be part of the Bridge Church and the work that God was doing there, this table that he was preparing for the Algonquin community. And it's God's grace and mercy and love for us that invites us into this story. The greatest feast that's available to us on this earth is to be part of what Christ is doing, this building of the church in the community where he's planted us. Now, I know that some of you, as you prayerfully consider, will be called to build the church elsewhere. My encouragement to you is do that. But I'm also convinced that God has already planned and prepared people for this work. And I'm asking you to prayerfully consider if you're some of those that God has called to build this church. This is the story of the greatest feast ever hosted. And the best part is, you're invited.